Have you recently had blood work done uh, for only to have your doctor really just tell you that your triglycerides were elevated, your cholesterol was high, and that you essentially needed to go on a cholesterol lowering pill, otherwise known as a statin? Is there a connection between high cholesterol and thyroid disease? Well, I'm Dr. Hagmar, and I'm the clinic director here at drhagmar.com, where we help patients from all over the world tackle their chronic health problems using functional medicine and clinical nutrition. In today's video, I'm gonna address this connection between high cholesterol and thyroid disease and what you need to know about statins and cholesterol. I'll also talk about two tests that you really need to have done before going on statins. I'll also talk about insulin's resistance, uh, effects on cholesterol levels and how that's tied into thyroid disease. And finally, if you stay with me all the way end, I, I'm gonna teach you and share with you some of the crucial vitamins that you should start taking if you've already started down that road of taking statins. And these are gonna be things like Lipitor, Crestor, Zocor, and Pravacol. Now, the link between thyroid disease and high cholesterol has been established going all the way back to the 1930s. And if you're someone who has been diagnosed with lipid problems, either high cholesterol, low cholesterol, high triglycerides, high LDLs, which are your bad cholesterol, you should really know that thyroid disease is one of the major causes and major contributors to cholesterol problems. Now I'll say that again, thyroid disease is the major cause of cholesterol problems. So before you go on cholesterol medications, I want you to consider the potential for thyroid disease. You see, several studies have actually shown that high cholesterol all by itself is an early marker of what we call subclinical hypothyroidism. And that really shouldn't be ignored, right? Think about that for a moment. If you're taking a statin, you're taking these cholesterol lowering pills, when the real cause of your problem is a hidden thyroid problem, that just doesn't make any sense, right? Now, if you're not familiar with subclinical hypothyroidism, this is when your TSH is normal, right? But your thyroid hormone levels, T3 and T4, are very low. Now, the problem with subclinical hypothyroidism is that this is missed almost every single day in traditional medical doctor's offices. And that's because of many different causes, but for the most part, it's the reference range that's being used for TSH. Many times, doctors just don't order anything more than a TSH. And then if your TSH falls anywhere between 0.5 all the way up to 5.5, then no other testing is done as it relates to the thyroid gland. And so many people are actually often missed because of that normal TSH. Now, overt hypothyroidism, on the other hand, this is the classical definition of thyroid disease. This is when you have an elevated TSH and your thyroid hormone levels, your T3 and your T4, these hormones are actually low. Now, understanding the connection between heart disease and thyroid disease is very important because heart disease, it's the leading cause of death in the United States for men. It's the leading cause of death for women. And if you have thyroid disease, you're at even a higher risk for the development of atherosclerotic placking. Now, if you don't already know this, having high cholesterol is not due to a deficiency of statins. It's not due to a deficiency of cholesterol lowering medications in your blood. And that's because the reason behind high cholesterol or I should say that, that a good doctor, let me start off by saying this, a good doctor is a good investigator. And so he or she is going to investigate the reasons behind this high cholesterol. And so what potentially could be causing those problems? That's what your doctor has to figure out. So let's talk a little bit about the relationship here between thyroid gland and cholesterol. Now, for just a moment, um, it's very, very important and, and critically important to understand that the connection between cholesterol and thyroid disease is without a doubt unquestionable. The thyroid itself is a, a small butterfly-shaped gland. It, it sits in the front of your neck. Uh, basically, its job is to make thyroid hormones, namely T3 and T4, uh, in response to a hormone signal that comes from your brain called the pituitary gland. And I like to think of this pituitary gland as, as like the head coach, right? And it's the, the coach with a megaphone. And so what happens is, is when your thyroid levels drop in your blood, so when your T3 levels drop and your T4 levels drop below the normal levels of, of where they should be, what happens is your pituitary gland gets on this megaphone and it starts yelling into that microphone, which causes a release of TSH. All right, now here's why this is so important for you to understand. When your TSH levels are high, your pituitary gland is yelling into the megaphone, right? And it's trying to stimulate, it's trying to kick that thyroid into gear. It's trying to tell it to make more thyroid hormones, make more T3, make more T4. When you have an elevated TSH, however, those thyroid hormones typically are going to be low. And this again is what we call hypothyroidism. 
Now I've talked about T3, I've talked about low T3, I've talked about the reasons why a person doesn't convert the, um, the inactive hormone uh, T4 into the active thyroid hormone T3. And I've talked about the primary causes of hypothyroidism as well as many different thyroid patterns that exist that just don't show up on normal blood work, on a normal thyroid screening. And again, if this is something that resonates with you, there's a free ebook that I put together. I suggest you download it. Um, it's very simple. If, I'll leave a, a link in the description. And if you want to download that free guide, you can. So what is this connection between hypothyroidism and high cholesterol? So here it is. When your TSH goes up, as in the case of hypothyroidism, again, elevated TSH, low T3, low T4 hormones, it does a couple of things. Number one, it decreases the LDL receptor activity. That's number one. And number two, it causes, uh, it binds to the receptors in the liver, which increase an enzyme uh, called HMG-CoA reductase. Now that sounds like a mouthful and it sounds like a lot, but let me explain. HMG-CoA reductase is the primary enzyme involved in cholesterol production. So what this means is that when your TSH levels go up, your liver produces more cholesterol. We also know that in addition to when the cholesterol levels go up, we also know that there's an increase in levels of triglycerides. They also go up. We also see uh, oxidized LDL levels go up, and we also know that that's all tied into an elevated TSH. And again, with that, we also see good cholesterol, which are your HDLs. We also tend to see those uh, go into the lower range of things, okay? So now you might be wondering, that doesn't sound too good. And with all the controversy surrounding the side effects of statins, you may be wondering if it's a good idea to start taking a statin if there's a more natural and better solution to addressing these high cholesterol levels. So the answer to that question really depends on what kind of doctor that you're working with and how you want to approach your own health. If you work with your primary care doctor, essentially he or she is going to put you on a statin and they're gonna call it a day essentially. On the other hand, if you work with a doctor who specializes in root cause medicine, a functional medicine doctor, they're going to investigate the reasons behind this cholesterol, right? There's no doubt that statins can reduce your cholesterol. In fact, statins work by blocking that enzyme that I just mentioned just a moment ago. Statins work by blocking HMG-CoA reductase. And again, that's the enzyme that produces cholesterol. So the problem with this is that when we talk about these, this bad cholesterol, this LDL cholesterol that we tend to, to become hyper-focused on, what we fail to realize is that LDL cholesterol is really like an umbrella, right? Of that LDL cholesterol, there could be good LDLs and there could be bad LDLs. And it really kind of depends on which kind of LDL you have. All right. More important is the total number of LDLs that you have uh, is, is the particle size. Uh, particle size is very important, but also whether or not those LDLs are big or if they're small. You see, the small, dense LDLs, these are the ones that you need to be concerned with, as these are the ones that are associated with that atherosclerosis. And these, again, these are ones that statins don't address. Okay? Statins don't affect the small, density LDL particles nor does it address the particle number. So some of the most important markers that you need to know about uh, if you have blood work uh, when it comes back is, um, again, having too much LDL cholesterol uh, is, is a problem, but we need to know more importantly, what pattern of LDLs are high. Are they the big ones or are they small ones? The next thing we need to know is the particle number, right? Otherwise known as specifically the LDL particle number. So again, those are tests you should have your doctor run long before you ever consider going on statins, okay? Again, I highly encourage you to get those cardiovascular markers done and work with a doctor who will investigate why these levels are elevated. Again, that's what functional medicine is all about. Here's where functional medicine has so much more to offer you than traditional medicine. Now, one thing that most doctors uh, tend to ignore and they tend to overlook uh, is that statins can actually cause more problems to blood sugar. They can cause more problems to the thyroid gland. They can cause all kinds of problems with your hormones. You see, hormones in, in your body are really made from cholesterol. So anytime we talk about hormonal imbalances in men or in women, so we're talking about problems with estrogen, we're talking about problems with progesterone, we're talking about problems with testosterone, Maybe we're talking about problems with cortisol, if you're, if you're familiar with uh, problems with the adrenal glands, problems with pregnenolone. And even if you have low vitamin D levels, these are all things that can be affected. Now to make matters worse, um, your heart 
depends on some very, very important vitamins. One of them is called coenzyme Q10, or CoQ10 for short. Now, CoQ10 is a compound that helps your heart cells make energy, right? We call this ATP. Now, the significance about this is, is while your body naturally produces coenzyme Q10 or CoQ10, as we get older, as we age, the levels of CoQ10, they decrease. So the combination of aging, which you can't control, and taking statins are really two strikes against the person who has thyroid problems. But what you might not know is that statins reduce coenzyme Q10. So health conditions like heart disease and brain disorders and diabetes and cancer, guess what? These have all been linked to low levels of CoQ10. Now, another aspect of thyroid disease tied into high cholesterol that gets overlooked in traditional medicine is that when TSH levels are elevated, all right, as in hypothyroidism, it also increases the chances of insulin resistance. And so if you're a diabetic out there or maybe someone who just has blood sugar dysregulation, um, that thyroid plays a role in that as well. You see, insulin resistance occurs when the cells no longer respond to insulin. So as, a, as, as uh, different from a diabetic, um, a type one diabetic where their cells don't produce insulin, a type two diabetic is where their body doesn't listen uh, or isn't able to, to uh, shuttle the glucose into the cell because insulin is not doing its job. There's what we call insulin resistance. And again, this is just when the cells just don't listen to the signaling of insulin. Okay, so again, the pancreas makes this insulin. Insulin's job is to take glucose, which is sugar, which is in the blood, and funnel that into the cells of our body in order to be made for energy. You see, with insulin resistance, however, especially when there's thyroid disease, that glucose never gets into the cells. And now glucose builds up and builds up and builds up in the blood. This leads to the liver making more cholesterol. This also leads to the storage of cholesterol. So we see this in terms of a person gaining weight, excess glycogen. And of course, we see this uh, in showing up in, in blood work from a, from a standpoint of just cholesterol levels. Now, if you take a look at this illustration, you can see all the problems that are associated with too much insulin or what we refer to as hyperinsulinemia. And the thing that I want you to notice here is that these all point, they all point to cardiovascular disease. So just as a refresher here, hypothyroidism, causes more cholesterol production in the liver. This can cause insulin resistance, and both of these spell big trouble for your heart. So just like hypothyroidism, where you have high TSH and low thyroid hormone levels, insulin resistance or excess insulin also increases triglycerides. It also increases LDLs, which are again those bad cholesterol, and it decreases your HDLs, which is your good cholesterol. So one of the side effects of cholesterol-lowering pills or statins is type 2 diabetes. We see this over and over again. In some people, statins have also been shown to increase uh, that type 2 diabetes as much as 30 to 40%. Now, I'm not sure your doctor, you know, is going to warn you uh, about this, uh, you know, as you're walking out the office. Oh yeah, oh, by the way, Ms. Jones, you know those statins that I just prescribed you for your high cholesterol? In three, four, and sometimes in five out of 10 people, uh, it can cause diabetes and can cause more insulin resistance. But don't worry about it. If that happens, you know, we've got some diabetic medications that we can put you on, right? And so again, that just doesn't make any sense. Now, remember what I said earlier. I said that not only is hypothyroidism a cause of high cholesterol and hypothyroidism, I also said that insulin resistance uh, and diabetes is another cause. So again, Hopefully with this information that you just learned in today's video, you can now see the dangers of just blindly taking cholesterol lowering pills, ignoring the link between thyroid and high cholesterol, as well as ignoring that link between insulin resistance uh, and high cholesterol, right? So again, those are two very, very important components that have serious consequences to your heart. So again, if those things, uh, if you find yourself in that predicament, I should say, Make sure that your doctor orders what's called an NMR lipo profile test. This is a test that can help break down the kinds of LDL cholesterol that you have into the small LDL particles or the large LDL particles. And again, the small ones are the bad ones and the large ones are the ones that actually have been shown to have a protective benefit, okay? So if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. Uh, make sure you comment below. Be sure to hit that notification button. 
And if you leave a comment, I'll do my best to respond to that comment. Um, and again, the one other thing that I want to say too here is that if you want to know more information uh, about cholesterol and its links to thyroid disease and insulin resistance, there's an article that I wrote that goes into a whole lot more detail uh, about thyroid disease and many of the other cardiovascular risk markers that we often tend to see uh, elevated in patients that uh, have thyroid disease, insulin resistance, and high cholesterol. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed today's video. We'll see you next time.